Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today we've got another spoiler free book review to share with you guys and today we're talking about A Haunting on the Hill by Elizabeth Hand. First of all, look at this cover. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Second of all, this book takes place in the legendary Hill House. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I love Shirley Jackson so much. Um, I love everything I've read by her, and I especially love The Haunting of Hill House, as well as We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Those are my two favorites, but I love The Haunting of Hill House. I also love the limited series that Mike Flanagan made um, called The Haunting of Hill House. The stories are very different. It's mostly inspired by... The Haunting of Hill House, but both of the stories are told so beautifully. I love them both so much. <laughs> anyway, A Haunting on the Hill is the first ever novel that has been authorized by the Shirley Jackson estate um, to take place in Hill House. And this was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. As soon as I heard about it, I was like, oh, yes, yes. Um, and I was lucky enough to get an early copy of it. This book comes out on October 3rd, so mark your calendars. Um, I haven't read any reviews. I don't know if people are loving it or not. I know that when um, a piece of media or literature like The Haunting of Hill House is so beloved, some you know people are gonna have feelings about returning to that with a different author. Um, but I think she, I think Elizabeth Han just um, pays great homage to the house. I was so excited to go back there to Shirley Jackson in general. I think it was beautifully done. So let me tell you the gist of this story so you can decide if you want to mark those calendars or not. So this is a book about a woman named Holly and she is a playwright, a struggling playwright. And... Um, she is spending the weekend, I think, um, sort of out of the city. Um, they're staying at this Airbnb. It's during the pandemic or just after the pandemic, um, sort of slowed down a bit. I won't say ended, but slowed down a bit. And, um, she, they're staying with friends, her and her girlfriend, Nissa. Nissa's a songwriter, a singer, very talented singer. Um, and they're staying with friends out of the city and one morning Holly gets up early and she goes for a drive and she ends up going to the next town over, a few town o towns over, a town called Hillsdale where she stumbles upon a giant mansion <laughs> which appears to be unoccupied and she thinks to herself because she's currently working on rewriting and adapting a play called I think the Witch of Edmonton and she's rewriting it and she wants it to bring it to the stage and she thinks what if I could rent this place bring me my girlfriend um the the main actress who she wants to star in the play a woman named Amanda Greer who's kind of like a bit of a icon um, infamous character in the local, I think they live in New York, in the like New York theater scene. And so her and then her friend Stevie, who she's known for years and years and who she also wants to cast in the play. So she's like, what if we made it kind of a residency? We rent this house, we go up there, we spend time just making art, you know, rewriting the play, working on it. Nissa can write songs. We can read through the play. Just, she's imagining just a very amazing, creative, fulfilling vibe in this house. But of course we, the readers, know that's Hill House. <laughs> and we know Hill House waits. And we know Hill House watches. And we know Hill House devours. So we know this isn't going to go well for any of them. <laughs> what I kind of like too, it's really a slow burn, which I like in a haunted house story. I like the slow burn. Like it, it's we're almost 90 pages in before this group even makes it to the house. And it's a, you know, 340 page book. 
a lot of it is her going up and looking around, then getting in touch with the local realtor and trying to convince her girlfriend Nissa that they should do this. So it's a lot of talking and plotting and planning. And I loved it. It really built the tension for me. I was I was just aching. I was like, put me in this house. <laughs> Let's get there. But it was done in such a way that it was it was delicious. I loved every minute of the build up to them entering Hill House. And um yeah, so from there things just go downhill as you could imagine. We find out that the realtor owns Hill House and so Holly is trying to convince her to let her rent it for two weeks in October. And the lady's kind of like, she doesn't want to rent it, which like, we know why, girl, we know why. <laughs> um, but eventually Holly wears her down. And yeah, then the four of them move into the house and all hell breaks loose. And the, you know, what I find scary and what you find scary could be two entirely different things. But for me, a good slow burn haunted house story where things are creepy and you don't know what's going on and it's like you can feel your skin crawl from the things you're reading that does it for me and like from the little things one thing which always scares me when I read about it and it's done in this story is losing time like someone will go somewhere they'll think it's been 10 minutes later but it's actually been like five hours that creeps me out and that happens we get some of that in this book and that's one of those things that just the idea of losing time like that really scares me, <laughs> really scares me. And um, I thought I thought this book was really well done. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think whether you're familiar with Hill House or not, like if you if you don't know what the haunting of Hill House is, that's fine. You don't need to have read that to know what's going. Like it's the book also stands alone. Um, much like Hill House walks alone. Um, and so whether you whether you're familiar or not you could still get a lot from this book but those who love Hill House like I do I think you'll love this too and I was very satisfied with the story with the ending with all of it I thought it was very well done and from what I can tell Elizabeth Hand has a ton of other books as well and in fact in the past I think on multiple occasions she's won Shirley Jackson awards for her horror and um, I look forward to going back and checking out more of her work. So thanks so much to Nick Galley and the publisher, I think it's Macmillan, um, for allowing me early access to this book. It meant the world to me and I can't wait to get my hands on a physical copy of it, which uh, hopefully I'll do soon after it's published. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there for now. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you familiar with Shirley Jackson? Did you love The Haunting of Hill House? Alternatively, did you love Mike Flanagan's The Haunting of Hill House? That limited series, um, I don't know I've already said it, but I loved it so much. It's so good. Mike Flanagan's an incredibly talented visual storyteller, and I couldn't imagine anyone having told that story different or any better. Um, so yeah, let me know. Do you plan on reading this book? What's your favorite Shirley Jackson novel? Anything you can think of, tell me below. And I will see you again real soon. Bye.